Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Air Exchangers HRV, the final frontier in pH. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Teats. So today we are talking air exchangers and HRVs. So one of my latest projects was to install an HRV, which stands for heat recovery ventilator, which is basically just an air exchanger, but it has the added benefit of kind of pre-treating the air. So it mixes the air through a little honeycomb system and it's going to use your inside air to either preheat or pre-cool the outside air to kind of be more efficient. Now, prior to having this, the CO2 levels in my house with just myself, the wife and the pooch was probably about 900 to I'd say 12, 1300 on average. If we had, you know, the kids over, parents over, someone else over, then it could be, you know, more like 1500, 1700, 1900, really depends how many people are around. Now, it's not just people breathing, that is the main cause. But if you have like a gas stove or gas furnaces or other kind of combustion things, so there's lots of ways of adding CO2 to your home. So elevated CO2 levels can make you drowsy, you can get headaches, you'll not be as alert. So there's a lot of potential things from elevated CO2 levels in your home. Now in the summertime, if it's nice out, open a window, you get fresh air in, it's gonna drop those levels pretty quick. But if you're somewhere where it's scorching hot all the time, your windows, your house is really shut up tight. Um, same thing, if it's really hot, you know, like in Orlando or somewhere, super humid, your AC's on 24 seven. Or you're somewhere really cold and everything's sh closed off all the time. Um, those are situations where the CO2 is going to build up in your home. Um, so after installing an air exchanger, now the first way to actually know where your CO2 levels are is to get a meter. So I've been using this guy, picked it up off Amazon, I'll throw a link below. Um, that's how I was able to judge my CO2 levels. So prior to installing the HRV, my levels on average, I'm going to say were like 900 to 1100, 1200 ish. Since installing it, they're now about 450, 500 on average. Some days I see it drop down to closer to 400. You know, the highest I've seen is about 550. So it's basically cut in half, which has been a huge improvement. Now, this is a reef channel, so obviously we care how does it affect the reef tank. Now, I've seen a nice big boost in pH since I did that. So just taking a look at the Fusion app, prior to the air exchanger, my high of pH was about 8.12. My low was about 7.94, 7.94-ish. Now, after installing it, my pH jumped up to around 8.22 and my low of 8.03. So that's about a 0.1 increase, which has been pretty solid. Same thing, 8.19, 8.22, 8 8.2, and it slowly actually raised my low. So 8.07, like that is huge. So my old high is basically my new low, which has been crazy. Now, I've actually, it's actually dropped a little bit since because the needle beetle on my skimmer broke, but that's the side of the thing, this is killing my air exchange. But removing all that CO2 from your ambient air is going to greatly help the pH of your tank, which is better for coral growth, it's better for your fish and basically everything else in the tank, and better for you. So, looking at those numbers, so the HRV actually wasn't that hard to install, I did it myself, but let's go take a look. All right, so this lovely contraption is the HRV or heat recovery ventilator, and it has nice big ducting. So these are six inch pipes that are basically exchanging the air in the house. Uh, I did have to draw, drill a nice big six inch hole and that's the vent outside. So upstairs in the hallway by the tank, I cut a hole in the wall and that's basically my air intake. And we'll turn this off for a second so I can open it up. Now if we look inside, we can see this big honeycomb. So on the left hand side, we got a fan and we come back over here, we have another fan. And basically what this does, so this is drawing in fresher from the outside. Uh, I recently installed the instant hot water tank. And so I use the old ventilation, so it's pulling fresh air from the roof. This fan sucks it in and it comes through this honeycomb mesh and comes out and gets put back into the furnace. So that's my fresh air from outside. This side is what's drawing my stale air from upstairs. And that comes in, goes through the little filter, goes through the mesh, and then that is exhausted outside of the house. Now you'll notice there's also a drain line on this. So one of the other huge benefits is this also pulls humidity out of the air. So if you got a lot of tanks in your house, you got a lot of humidity, this is gonna help you control your humidity. So there's definitely a few advantages here. Now, if we look upstairs, you can kind of see the hole that I cut. I still got to pick up a grill and put this on this, but this is roughly a nine by nine hole. And you can kind of hear it sucking a little bit, but I use the wall cavity all the way down. Then we cut a little hole in the bottom of the wall. 
drilled down through the bottom, and then capped it up and patched the drywall. But that is the air intake, so hot, humid air rises, so it's going to suck out that humid air and get rid of that stale air out of the house. Now if we come outside the house, you can see the ventilation for it. So you already see it blowing out. This is my nice big six inch grill. So lots and lots of air being exchanged and it has definitely made a decent improvement. Now it may look a little intimidating, but it actually wasn't that hard to install myself. You could of course get it installed, but it's probably gonna be half the price if you DIY it yourself and install it. And all honestly, the hardest part was really just figuring out where to do my air intake. And that is basically the stale air from your house. Now, the other big advantage with it is sucking out humidity. If you have large boxes of water in your house, you're going to have high humidity, which if it's too high, it could be bad for your health, for your house. It could cause other potential issues down the road. So another huge advantage is that it reduces humidity in your home. So it's going to save your home and it's going to be good for your family and it's going to be good for your tank. So if you're worried about it, if you think you have potential issues, pick up a CO2 meter. Um, they're less than a hundred bucks. You're gonna be able to figure out what those levels are. And if your levels are a little higher, like over a thousand, it might be something to look into. If they're above 1500, I would definitely look into it because that's the point where it could make you get sleepy, cause potential headaches and other stuff. So if you're feeling a little lethargic, your tank has low pH, an HRV or an ERV is definitely something to look into. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully it gave you guys kind of a new frontier on the side of pH for your family, your tank and your home. Now, if you enjoyed this, as always, guys, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next update.